Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can control a Matter smart bulb like this one from a Raspberry Pi like this one. I'll be using the iOS Home app and my HomePod powered thread network, but everything I show you in this video can be applied to Android and Wi-Fi devices too. If you're interested in learning a bit more about the Matter protocol and how it works, then keep watching. I'll start by showing you how to set up the Raspberry Pi, then I'll show you how to pair the bulb with the iOS Home app, and finally I'll show you how to use the Matter chip tool to control that bulb from the Raspberry Pi. I've written up a blog post on this subject already with loads of detail and I'll link to that in the description. Let's start with the Raspberry Pi. Sitting on my desk here is a Raspberry Pi 3. Now I've already flashed the SD card with the latest version of Raspbian Lite and I've already brought it up to date. It's already powered up and connected to my network and I have an SSH terminal open on my desktop so I'll jump into that now. So here is the SSH terminal opened into the Raspberry Pi and what we want to do now is install something called SnapD. SnapD is an app store for Linux essentially. To install it we just need to run this command. And when prompted just press Y to continue and now we let that install. With that installed we now just need to reboot the Raspberry Pi. The Pi has rebooted and I've reconnected to the SSH terminal. So what we will now install is the chip tool. Of course it's possible to compile your own version of the chip tool yourself, but I found that the Raspberry Pi just doesn't have the grunt or the memory and I talk about that in the blog post a little bit. So the chip tool has now installed, so let's just give it a try just to make sure it's working. So we'll just run chip tool from the command line and we should get a, a big blurb of all the commands like this. I'll just make that a little bit smaller and run this again because I've, yeah. So you can see these are all the commands that the chip tool supports and we'll come back to the chip tool in a little bit. With the chip tool now successfully installed on the Raspberry Pi, the next thing to do is to add the smart bulb into my thread network. If I was using a Matter over Wi-Fi device, I'd be able to use the chip tool directly as I can simply provide the Wi-Fi SSID and the password. But as I'm using Thread, the process is a little bit more complicated, so the easiest way for me to demonstrate is to simply use the Home app on my iPhone. The smart bulb I'm using in this demonstration is from Nanoleaf, and it's one of their Essentials range. I chose Nanoleaf as my very first official Matter devices, because their brand itself has been around for a couple of years and because they support uh, Matter over Thread. I'll include a link to this device in the description. I've got the bulb set up now on my desk in my little test rig. This is simply just a, a bulb holder and a light switch with a, a socket on the end. And I use this for testing all my Shelly devices and other stuff. So we'll get started now by switching the bulb on. It helps if the test rig is plugged in. A few moments later. Let's try that again. Now we need to pair the matter bulb with iOS. So I've brought my iPhone up. I have my uh, iPhone here and I'm mirroring the screen so hopefully you can see that in the recording. 
So what we're going to do now is to start the pairing process. And to do that, we just need to scan the QR code on the side of the bulb. So we can do that from here where we say add accessory and then it will bring up the camera. And then if we bring that down, it should be able to pick up the bulb on the, the, sorry, the QR code on the side. And then we'll simply get through the pairing process. Now the pairing process typically takes a little bit of time and I think that's just to do with the fact that it's establishing a secure connection. Okay, so the pairing process is now basically completed and I'll just need to pick the room and I'm gonna use my inventing room. And we'll just give it its standard name. And I don't want any automations by default. And now you can see our bulb has been added in. If I jump over to the overhead cam now, you can see the bulb in question. And if I then open up the control, you can see I'm able to adjust its brightness. And I should be able to turn it off and turn it back on. So we have now paired our Matter bulb with the iOS Home app. This pairing flow will be almost identical on Android as the Matter pairing process is very standard. So it will always follow the same pattern of either scanning the QR code or you can use what's called a setup code. And that's usually printed on the side of the device as well. The last step is to now return to the Raspberry Pi and configure the chip tool so it can also control the bulb. In order to accomplish that, we'll need to pair the chip tool with the bulb, just like we did with the iPhone. However, as we used the QR code on the side of the bulb to pair it with the iPhone, we can't use the QR code again. That's a security feature of Matter, and it's intended to stop somebody reusing a setup code for a device that's already been paired. In order to pair our chip tool, we're going to need to generate a new setup code. And to do that, we'll return to the iPhone. To access the new setup code, we simply go into the bulbs details. We can use the little cog, and that will bring up the information about the bulb. And there's an option down at the bottom, which is turn on pairing mode. So we'll tap that and that will bring up a new setup code. So I'll make a note of that now as we'll need to use that with the chip tool. Back now to our Raspberry Pi and we're going to execute chip tool using the new pairing code. So we type in chip tool pairing because that's what we want to do. We said that we're going to use a code which is because we have a setup code and now we need to provide a node ID which is kind of an address for the device. So we can pick something pretty random here and then we'll type in our code. Now we take out the hyphens because the code is actually one big long number. And if we kick that off, you can see a whole lot of gubbins comes flying up on the screen. And it obviously hasn't worked. We got a chip error here. And if we scroll up through all this gubbins, what we can actually see is a failure on something called attestation verification. Now, the exact reason for this failure would be a topic for a whole other video, but the summary is that the chip tool cannot verify the uh, device, so it can't verify the uh, smart bulb. Now that's related to certificates and it's related to the matter certification process. When a commercial device is actually certified to be matter compatible, uh, there's a kind of an exchange of certificates and the firmware or something gets signed with a special certificate. And that's how any matter controllers can verify that the device it's trying to control is actually officially certified. The chip tool by default is only intended for testing devices that are under 
development so they're not actually certified yet because of that it isn't able to complete the verification process because the certificates it's using don't match the certificate used by the uh, official device thankfully we can work around this by telling the chip tool to use the proper set of certificates now in order to do that we must first get our hands on the official certificates and thankfully they're all provided inside the uh, matter repository we'll hop back to our raspberry pi and what we want to do now is check out the matter sdk from github so i'll kick that off now this is quite a big project so it may take a few minutes to pull it all down one eternity later with that now finished cloning we now want to run our chip tool again and this time with a new argument PAA trust store path and we've pointed that to a subdirectory under the connected home IP a directory that we've just pulled down and that's where all the production certificates live now at this point I'm not sure if the commissioning window um, that is the pairing mode that we entered on the bulb will still be open it can be open for as long as 15 minutes but we're going to try this command now and it may or may not work depending on the state of the commissioning window and given what I can see with the discovery message it looks like the commissioning window is closed so I'll simply return to the iPhone and I'll terminate that command and I'll execute clear the screen and what I'll do is I'll just repeat that step to turn on the pairing mode and I'll get a new code which I will enter here and that is three one two three So that's three one two three three one two one two three. So we'll kick that off again. And now that has all worked. And if you can see at the top, we actually get a message on the iPhone that says the um, it says that the accessory has been added to the Matter test home. Let's now confirm that this all works, and we can do that by sending a few commands. So the first one I want to send is to read some basic information from the device and what we'll do is we'll read the vendor name. So I'll clear the screen again and I'll paste in the command. So we're going to run our command here which is to access the basic information and what I want to do is read the vendor name. We need the node ID which is our address so that was 88 and then we're going to use an endpoint in the matter or in the device and that's the kind of default endpoint and it's always zero and that's the one that contains all the matter specific stuff again that's probably a whole other video on clusters and attributes and stuff but that's what we need to do so if we run that and what we should see is nanoleaf and as you can see here nanoleaf has been pulled back and that's the manufacturer if we now try something like so we'll go chip tool we're going to turn say on off and that's the the cluster for turning the bulb on and off and we'll say on again we want to say our node id is 88 and in this instance we're going to use the light endpoint which will be one so if we run that hopefully you can see this glow so the bulb is turned on and if we repeat that the bulb should turn off so I'm not sure what's happening there I think welcome to the vagaries of matter devices and thread networking so that actually has failed to send the message so we'll try that again now we've got lots of errors coming in 
resources busy. Interesting. We can turn it on and there we go, we've turned it off. Not the smoothest end to a video or certainly to one of my videos um, that I've ever had, but you can see now that we have actually controlled the uh, matter accessory, this smart bulb, using both the iPhone and the chip tool. Obviously, we can do a hell of a lot more with the chip tool. The chip tool covers every possible uh, permutation of device. It, it can essentially do everything. So if you were to dig into that chip tool, you would be able to change the color of the bulb. You'd be able to, to um, alter and manage all aspects of that bulb from that tool. I do hope to make a few more videos on the subject, mainly to just for my own knowledge so I can explore the different aspects of that tool. So if you are interested in kind of following me along as I, as I learn all about matter, please do consider subscribing. I will wrap up there. Hopefully you've found that video interesting. A couple of little speed bumps uh, just towards the end there, but that's all part of the learning process. If you have enjoyed the video, please do click the like button as that just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you've any questions or you'd like a bit more detail, please do ask in the comments. As I've said, if you're interested in matter and you'd like to follow along as I experiment and investigate the protocol and just try to understand more about it, please do consider subscribing so you'll be alerted to new videos. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.